Good morning, fam. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we're going to talk about challenges. Small challenges, big challenges, business challenges, life challenges, and how to get over them. I've been noticing that over the past couple of weeks, especially, I don't know, if because of the pandemic uh, continuing on because of the upcoming election, there's just been a lot of additional stress. There's been a lot of additional um, negative thoughts coming in the air, it seems. And I wanted to provide you some advice based on my own experience and create a space for us to talk about this more openly here today. And again, thank you again. This is episode 204 of the Income Stream. A uh, big welcome to brand new member, Michael Mann. Thank you, Michael, for being a member here and for everybody here supporting the channel. Uh, I've been on a video kick lately. I think it was because last week Caleb came in and uh, Caleb's my videographer. He came to my home and we filmed 56 videos, not for the YouTube channel, but for an uh, upcoming online course. And then I think that just got me in the groove, right? So not only have I, have I gone live every day, I've been actually creating some videos that have been coming out, little short form videos to answer certain questions or to uh, provide some value and help to you. And I have another one that's about to pop out right after this live stream. So you have a chance to go even further and that's a nice fun video that I created yesterday. And again, I've just been having fun. I'm trying to hone in on my skills, get better and keep myself distracted from all the craziness that's happening, um, including all the flies that might be landing on certain people's heads. Anyway, uh, today I'm excited also because I have something that I wanna open, thanks to Grandma Goody who sent something over to me and I don't know what's inside. I hope I didn't break anything by doing that, but uh, I'll open that live right after the intro here and uh, we'll just have an open chat. Thank you again so much for being here. I appreciate you and um, let's have some fun. This is the income stream to help you achieve your dream. Oh, while we keep it clean, this is the income stream. It's the kind of show where you can come and go, but then you leave inspired with no fee required. The income stream with Pat Flynn. All right. So I can hear the kids. It's okay because that means they're getting ready for their upcoming Zoom calls so crazy to, to know that and this is why I'm very thankful that I have really good internet in the home uh we all three kids including myself are on zoom early in the morning and doing calls and such and it's just kind of crazy and it also makes me think about those who perhaps don't have access to good internet and how challenging it is for many people out there and like I said we're in the midst of a, a, a unprecedented crisis right now and pandemic as we all know and there's been a lot of challenges. Hello? Oh, hold on one sec. Okay. All right, chat. Um, here's what we're going to do. I have some landscapers who came in, who came in early. So we're going to, on the fly, I'm going to play the new video for you. I'm gonna play the new video for you. You get to see it before anybody else. So you get a live preview that'll buy me eight minutes of time. I gotta move the van. I gotta get things ready for the guys cause they're here to uh, install some artificial uh, turf. So we're going to, on the fly, make, make some things happen here. So I'm gonna create a new window. I'm going to go to Creator Studio. Thank you again for being uh, accommodating to the craziness of the Flynn household. But we're gonna we're gonna adapt and change, which is perfect because I actually had adaptation and change uh, inside my notes today. So we're gonna play this video. Thank you again, chat. This video is called "How to Niche Down and Crush Your Competition: The Riches Are in the Niches." Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? It's Pat Flynn, Flynn and I'm here to make content creation easier, easier more, more fun, and, and profitable for you. For you. And today, and today especially, especially when it comes to profit, profit we're talking about niching down, down in the market, market or, or the target, target audience, audience that you are actually, actually going after. It is, it is more, more beneficial to target, to target small, small because, because the truth is, is if you go too big, too fast, you're going, you're going to lose. Make sure you, make sure you stick around because in this video, I want to teach you different kinds of ways that you can decide to niche, to niche down and how that will be beneficial for you and that audience. As I often say, the riches 
are in, are the, in the niches. niches. Even, though Even though I know technically it's niches, niches, niches but then it's, then it's reaches, reaches in the niches, and that doesn't, doesn't sound as cool. There are, there are several, several benefits to starting, to starting by targeting, targeting a smaller group. group. Number, Number one, there's, there's less competition. competition. There's, there's less noise. There, there, there are less people trying to capture this specific, specific group's attention. attention. Therefore, Therefore, it's easier for you to, number two, become the leader faster, become that go-to favorite resource that not only people will come to, but people will share with each other when they find people like them. Two. Two. Number three, three, it's so much easier to create content content for a specific specific group of people because because you can can go deep with them. them. And when you can go deep with them, them, people will understand that you are the one one for them, them. especially when you nail the language language or the lyrics, as I often say, that they will respond to. You can discover and understand and study the language that this target audience responds to. And when you do that, they will often see that you are the person to go to. Jay Abraham, a famous marketer, once said, if you can define the problem better than your target customer, customer they're, they're going to automatically assume you have, you have a solution. solution. And, the and the more specialized you are, the, the better the language hits home with people. people. And number, number four, the solutions, solutions are so much more obvious because you're dealing with a smaller group of people who have a very specific set of problems. You can, you can create those very specific set of solutions and gain much more traction faster. faster. Now, now, I know there's a lot of objections to starting small and niching down. down. One, of One of the biggest objections that you might be having as well, wouldn't, wouldn't that mean that I'm actually not able to reach as many people? And yes, mathematically, mathematically that's, that's true. true. You, you niche down, down, there's a smaller pool of people that you can actually affect and speak to. to. The, the truth is because, because you are so specialized, you're going, you're going to make a deeper connection and reach more of those people than you, than you could if you went wide. wide. For example, example, say, say that, that you were in the fitness, fitness industry and you wanted to create a general fitness website, website as a resource. So you talked about all things, weight, training, losing weight, nutrition, gluten-free, supplements, all those kinds of things. things. For somebody, For somebody who, who is specifically interested in running their first marathon, they're going to come to your website and they're either going to get lost trying to find that information or realize that, hey, there's actually somebody out there who is specifically focused on helping somebody like me. And think, and think about it from a product perspective. If you were running your first marathon, where would you rather go get your shoes? Would you rather go to Target or Walmart or some general store where there's shoes plus groceries plus home furnishing and all that stuff? Or would you rather go to, if you're serious about this, to a person who knows knows about, about running and, and has resources and, and products about, about running so that, that you, you don't injure yourself, yourself you can train, train the best, and, and hopefully finish, finish that race. So, so although, yes, yes technically, you are targeting, targeting a smaller group of people, people you're, you're able, able to make a stronger, deeper connection and create better solutions for that, that group of people. The second common objection I get is people often worry that they're pigeonholing themselves into that space. Oh, I don't want to become known as the person who just helps people who run. I enjoy all kinds of things fitness, and I don't want to be known, known for just the runners. The runners. Okay, okay, I get, I get that, that too. too. However, again, again to make an impact on a person, on a person they have to know that you are a resource that's perfectly fit for them. For them. The, beauty the beauty of this is, is you can start one inch, one inch wide, one mile, mile deep, deep and then, and then over time, time, maybe you go two, two inches wide, wide, three inches wide. You start bringing in other kinds of people. people. You start with runners, and then, and then you get the cross, cross trainers, trainers, and then you, you, you get the athletes and the people who are maybe now into cycling. cycling. You can you can branch out from there after you started making a name for yourself. A very, a very common, common thing that I always see happens, however, is when a person starts small, oftentimes they love that space so much, and that audience loves them so much that they end up sticking around. They, they don't, don't even worry, worry about, about anybody else. else. They, they go, go now, now one, inch one inch wide, two, two miles, miles deep, three, three miles deep. Now, now instead of focusing on other niches, now they're, now they're going more into, into the niche that they, that they started with. with. Now, now it's not just, just an online course, course but now it's, it's a coaching program, program a live event, event, and all these other things, things that can be offered vertically versus going horizontally and then having to learn new languages and marketing tactics and all that other stuff. The riches... Are in, are in the niches. niches. So, so you might be asking, Pat, how, how do we niche down? down? Maybe, Maybe I'm in a space and I know I need to get a little, little bit more specific for the kinds of things that I need to offer and the kinds of people, of people I need to speak to. How do I, how do I even do that? Where do I even start? Well, well here, we here we go. First, All right. Hey, what's up, y'all? Um, <laughs> so we had a little emergency. Don't worry, not a bad emergency, but the gardeners came a little bit er- earlier. Actually, the landscapers were installing some artificial turf because the, just the heat has crushed our grass in the backyard. Um, hopefully that was okay. And hopefully that didn't... Anyway, cool. Look at the chat. Are we all, are we good? It looks like that's... Uh... Where'd they go? Cool. An echo is one way to talk faster. Was there really an echo coming in? 
That's strange. Well, again, I'm sorry about that, but hey, thank you so much for being accommodating. I checked the time. That was four minutes and 42 seconds. So, how not to record with multiple mics. Oh, you guys were hearing... Ah. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, well, I know what happened. I played the audio from the screen sharing at the same time. Yeah, okay. Cool. Are we good now? Just let me make sure we're good now. What? Hmm. Check. What is going on? Okay, it's good now. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that didn't work according to plan, but you know what? Sometimes life throws you challenges. And sometimes things don't work out the way they should. And step number one with dealing with challenges is to not let the negativity take over. And I'm very glad I put this mistaken in the beginning of this chat today to prove my point. Because sometimes we start the day off on a wrong foot or we get off on the wrong side of the bed. And it's really important to understand that if we continue to focus even on those small little negative things, they can then snowball and get bigger and bigger and bigger. When you get off on the wrong side of the bed, maybe you stub your toe and then you go to make eggs and then the eggs are bad. And then you go to take out the trash and then you realize the trash day was yesterday and you forgot the whole thing. And what happens is there's this thing called confirmation bias, in which case, whatever we believe, we start to look for things that prove that to be true, right? So the idea being, if you have something going on that provides a negative experience, it's okay to get frustrated. It's okay to be flustered for a moment. But the moment we choose to believe that that thing will affect the rest of our life or the rest of our day, then that's when it starts to, to spiral and it's when it starts to, to snowball. So I'm glad this lesson was able to came, come through in real time. And sometimes things just don't go according to plan, right? Not only did the landscapers come, but I had a plan B and even plan B didn't work you know what, it's not gonna affect the rest of my day because there are many more things that even if they were to go wrong, it had nothing to do with what just happened. But the moment I think, okay, today is a bad day, imagine if I said, okay, well, today's a bad day, it's only 8.44 a.m. in the morning. If I were to choose that today is a bad day, I've already chosen to basically consider everything else that happens as bad, right? And then although there might be some really good things that happen, they could potentially distract, be distracted by the negative things that I've chosen to focus on instead. So, there we go. Great. So, I would love to open this package really quick. This comes from Grandma Goody. The echo was certainly entertaining. Miracle morning, Hal Elrod, indeed. Cool. So, I want to open this really quick before we move on. But that's lesson number one. You know, don't, you shouldn't force yourself to, to look at the positive, but at least try to focus your energy into the real challenge and what is happening. Oh my gosh, Grandma Goody. Yes. So we got, we got Starburst, lots of Starburst. Early Halloween, y'all. We got some poppers, some uh, streamers. We even got some more Starburst. Oh, yay. And we got the Pat Flynn uh, Surf First Felt guy. There we go. 
I like it. Thank you, Grandma Goody. I appreciate you with the machete. I don't know if you could see the machete in there. Right there. Thank you so much for that. And there's also something here that's wrapped. It looks like it's... Okay, thank you. Uh, the Flynn family, Pat, April, County, and Kailani. Thank you, Grandma Goody. I'll open this later. But thank you so much for that. <laughs> Lewis says, teacher's pet. Thank you, Grandma Goody. That was so much fun on Sunday, celebrating episode 200 with y'all. All right, I'll put that away. Now that's a knife, indeed, a machete. Why the machete? If you don't know, I consider myself the guy at the front of the trail, getting all the weeds out of the way for you. That's why I'm here. So thank you. Machete Pat. <laughs> cool. Okay, so let's continue talking. And uh, again, adaptation is a big component of life and being an entrepreneur, things are gonna happen. Yes, it's important to plan. It's important to have uh, some direction. But the truth is you have to expect that things are not going to go according to plan. So when you can expect that these things happen, we're more likely to then tackle the problem versus consider everything going wrong. And like I said, the moment you say, oh, it's going to be a bad day. Well, you basically decided that the rest of the day is going to be affected by this one thing that happened in the morning. And uh, it's important to think about, OK, well, why did this happen or what still might be great after the end of all this? Number one, this will be a really great story. Number two, we're gonna have some really good uh, artificial grass in the back eventually. And number three, I will have remembered the next time to when I go share a video with you to make sure that the audio, in fact, is uh, set correctly. The reason why it wasn't was because I'm using a brand new computer as a result of an L LCD screen crack on my other computer. And it just, again, that could have derailed me, but Jess and I, we put our heads together, we found a solution and we moved forward. And that's the really important thing to put that energy that you might have that frustration into the solution. Now, if you don't know what the solution is, or even if you know the solution, but you just need some time, the next step when you come up with these challenges, again, in business or in life, is to learn from someone who's been there before. Learn from someone who's been there before. So go into the communities that you are involved in. Go into the Slack community within the income stream or even just come in live every day here and find and connect with people who may relate to the problems and the pains that you're having right now. I promise you, you are probably not the only person in the world to have such problems, whatever those problems might be, right? So I think it's really important to understand that, number one, you're not alone. And number two, there are often other people out there who are going through the same thing who you can connect with or who have gone through the same thing who could perhaps even give you a little bit of advice. The next step after that is to realize that, and this ties into what we talked about the other day, that asking for help is okay. It is completely okay to ask for help in certain situations uh, and in most situations. And the worst thing that can happen is you'll get a no. But the best thing that can happen is you can get support, you can get direction, you can get clarity, you can find a solution. And again, Finding those people who have been through this before, those are likely the people who could help you along the way. They're going to be more able to relate to you because they were once there before and then asking for help and being okay with that. That's the hardest part, in fact, is asking for help. Sometimes we feel like we are a failure or we are weak because we're asking for help when in actuality, when you are asking for help, you are becoming stronger. You are realizing what your weaknesses are such that you can get help or you are frustrated, you're, you're discombobulated, you're flabbergasted. And so you might need to find that help. And it's really important that, that we step up to ask for that. Dr. Joella, I've never said I'm having a bad day. I've been hit by a car, stitches, broken leg and more. Wow, and I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad you're okay, Dr. Joella. Lunchtime, says Tondalea. So don't shy away from help. That's sort of lesson number three. So lesson number one is don't have this thing that happens. These challenges affect everything else that's in a part of your life as much as possible, especially the small things that can then snowball and spiral you out of control. Uh, some challenges are obviously bigger than others, but in many cases, we can silo them from other parts of our lives as much as possible. It's okay to get frustrated, but take some of that negative energy and try to convert it into something that can help you find a solution or find other people. Step two, find other people 
who have gone through this uh, before you. There are many places online that you could find other communities and other people perhaps already that you have access to in your life, uh, groups that you may be a part of where you can ask to see if other people have gone through the same thing and realizing that you're not alone. That's, that's a big thing because sometimes when we go through these challenges, we feel like we're alone. And I remember when I got laid off, even though I knew other people were getting laid off at the same time, it was all over the news in 2008, I still felt, felt very sheltered and very alone. Like, although others were going through the same thing, they, they weren't going through it as hard as I was. It felt like that. And then when I started to find and, and talk to other people, other friends, other friends from college who were also getting furloughed or laid off, I started to realize that, number one, I wasn't alone. But number two, there were other people who were going through a much tougher time than I was. And the other thing that really helped was considering, okay, well, what what's literally the worst thing that can happen? And is, is that likely to be true? Oftentimes when we get flustered or frustrated or go through these challenges, we our brains do a good job of really coming up with the worst case scenario. I remember a big challenge for me in business was speaking on stage. I spoke on stage for the first time in 2011, and I very much was afraid of that. And that was a big challenge for me was to get over that fear. And I remember specifically having visions in my head of what might happen. And it got to the point where I was considering that maybe the audience would start to throw tomatoes at me or um, maybe uh, maybe I would end up dead in a ditch somewhere, right? But that's kind of ridiculous. Our brains are ridiculous sometimes. And in actuality, well, maybe I would just have a poor performance, but I was speaking in front of some professionals. They wouldn't you know, throw tomatoes at me or anything like that. And when it came to my layoff, I started to realize, well, you know what, like, although this is terrible, I have some friends, I have uh, some family that I could, you know, move back in with for a while as I get back on my feet. And that's exactly what happened. It's not where I wanted to be. I wish I still had my job. But I got back on my feet. And in fact, that motivated me to then drive even harder into building an online business to get myself out of that situation and into something completely new. And I didn't even know that that was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. A huge blessing in disguise. A lot of, uh, I, had, I had a lot of conversations with people recently. I had a chat with a, uh, we have a mastermind meeting monthly here in San Diego, which has been all virtual the last six months. And typically we meet at the WeWork in downtown. But lately we've been just meeting on uh, Zoom. And yesterday we had a really lengthy discussion about um, the positive things that can happen as a result of this pandemic, right? What does this make possible? Now, the pandemic is not a positive thing. It's completely, it, 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 it's it's terrible that it's happening. And obviously, people's lives are being lost. People's lives are being affected. People are losing their jobs. It's just, it's just crazy and insane out there. And that's a challenge. However, some people are stepping up during this time to consider this an opportunity, an opportunity to consider, well, what does this make possible? I know, for example, some people who are now, in fact, really slowing down and taking some time to spend more time with their kids. Although they were very busy with work and they're not doing as much of that anymore, they're now focusing on their kids more than ever, which is really cool. Some people are uh, fast forwarding their retirement. Um, they were kind of on autopilot for a while and now as a result of the pandemic are able to slow down during this challenge and consider, you know what, what's stopping us from selling our home now? Housing prices are really high and buying an RV and traveling all over the world, right? watching at speed to catch up says Sarah. Yeah, she's gonna be confused about the echo when she hears it, so. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out different ways to record with me on screen. Loom is not my favorite. Uh, I, I like Loom. Um, I like the desktop version more than the Chrome version, however, but I found Loom to be really, really handy in terms of uh, how easy it is to use. Once you get it kind of going, then it, it can be really easy for you. But yeah, RV life. I don't know if any of you are in, are, are in an RV. Even April and I had talked about that at some point, uh, potentially not selling the home, but at least, you know, taking the home with us somewhere at some moments during the year. Successful visit to the Department of Motor Vehicle. I give the rep an A++ on the survey, completed survey in the car right away. Nice. I love the slowing down aspect of the pandemic. You know, one thing it's done for me in particular is it's allowed me to think about, well, do I really need to go and speak and travel uh, to all these different places? And it's made me realize that I kind of was on autopilot where I was in a position where I was like, okay, once a month, I'm going to speak somewhere and travel and, and be on stages. And that's cool. And not having that done for six months, I've realized that I've been able to actually focus more on my business and my family at the same time. 
And uh, coming out of this, if we ever get back to quote unquote normal in some way, shape or form, I know that I'm not going to be speaking and traveling as much. Uh, if, if I do travel, it's going to be with the family and it's to places that we want to experience because the kids, even during this past six months, they've, they've grown up uh, mentally, they've grown up physically, and it's just, man, time is flying by. Time is absolutely flying by. Uh, so that's been a really good thing. Um, so we can, any of us, can take these challenges that are happening and consider potentially the opportunities and the possibilities that may come out of it. You might remember early on in the life of the income stream, I continued to talk specifically about the idea of what does this make possible? I got that from Michael Hyatt, and it's been something that I've been saying to myself every single day. I wake up and I go, wow, here we are in the pandemic still. What does this make possible? Team SPI, we moved forward with our SPI Pro community much faster. It was actually supposed to come out in 2021, but because of the pandemic, we moved it up. We put more team resources and money into providing a premier community at SPI Pro, uh, smartpassiveincome.com with uh, slash pro if you want to check that out. We had, um, you know, the, the income stream itself was something beautiful that came out of the pandemic too. Cool. Awesome. Just checking out the chat. And yes, sometimes these mistakes and these challenges that you come across could be a little embarrassing. I'm a little bit embarrassed about what happened on the stream earlier this morning. Doorbell rang. Landscapers came. I had to move the car out of the way. I played a video to take up some time. And then, of course, there was an echo and everybody's ears were hurting. So I apologize about that. But I've learned from it. It relates to today's topic and it'll be a fun story to tell for sure. Number four. It's all about the mindset. We know this. And when you when you start to transform that mind from woe is me why me can't control anything the truth is no we cannot go back into the past and change things but we can move into the future with a positive mindset and it's that positive mindset has a, whatever inkling of positivity that you might have that's what's going to help you get encouraged to find a solution to find gratitude where there may still be things to be grateful for this is why practicing gratitude is really important for mindfulness and getting over challenges mental health i start the day thinking about the things that i'm grateful for I end the day thinking about the things that I'm thankful that happened during the day. So I can sandwich my day in positivity. And this is something that really helps me stay focused on the things that are working well. And yes, I still think about the things that I could have done better, but by sandwiching the day with positivity, then I'm able to sleep better at night. I'm able to wake up and be ready and charged for the next day, for sure. How can you still be embarrassed? Well, your friends, hey, that's when you're most embarrassed when you're in front of your friends, right? So <laughs> gratitude is the attitude, says Ida. It's all good. We forgive you. LOL. Thanks, JT. So I'd love to share with you some specific challenges that I've had in the past uh, and what was going through my mind and also the kinds of things that I did to hopefully uh, as you can see, overcome some of these challenges. So I'm just going to take you back in the time. This is why I wore this shirt today, because I wanted to spend some time going back in time with you. And maybe you could relate to some of these. Maybe you can't. Maybe it'll prepare you for when these kinds of things happen to you in the future. So back in 2008, as you know, I launched a website to help people pass an architecture exam. It started doing extremely well. It didn't happen overnight, but I was in fact, putting 16 hours a day into the website and into forums and communicating with others, helping people online, helping people on my website uh, pass this exam. And soon I became seen as this expert within this niche, the riches are in the niches, this space of not just architecture and not just architecture exams, but a very specific exam. So this website started doing really well. It started gaining notoriety. And then I started to see that I was being linked to on many other different websites, including United States Green Building Council websites which means it was reaching thousands of people a day, which was really cool. Then in April-ish of 2009, a few months later, the business was making $25,000, $30,000 a month selling a $19 ebook. It was pretty crazy. I got a letter from the United States Green Building Council. Actually, it was an attorney 
that represented the United States Green Building Council. And I open this letter, it's very official looking, and it basically says that they are forcing me to stop doing what I'm doing, it's a cease and desist, or else they would take further action. I had seven days to make a change and to figure things out. And all I saw was cease and desist and further action, and I started to flip out. I started to go, you know what? Here it is. I knew things were too good to be true. I'm not cut out for business. This is my punishment for trying to do something outside of what I went to school for. Here it is. And I just thought about that for the next entire 24 hours. I could not go to sleep. I started to have anxiety attacks and panic attacks, thinking about how maybe I was going to go to jail, how the FBI was going to come. I was doing something illegal, whatever the case may be. But then I calmed down. The next day, I, I, I finally got some sleep. I calmed down and I said, okay, I need to figure out what to do from here because I had no idea what to do. All I knew is that somebody was potentially going to sue me. So I found an attorney through a friend. I said, hey, do you know anybody who can help me legally with this? I need some help understanding what's going on and what to do next. I started to take that negative energy that I had and start actually taking action on trying to do something to move this forward. So the truth is, if I just continued to think about this and, 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 and sulk about it, it would have not helped me at all. So I changed that up, and then I found somebody who could help me legally figure this out. And they read the document. It was a few pages long. And basically, they told me that it was because I was using the word lead, L-E-E-D, in my domain name that they wanted me to shut down. And so their, their legal, my legal counsel had a chat with their legal counsel and all that stuff. And they all, all of a sudden realized that, okay, if we were to make a domain name change, it would work out. So a lot of relief. I found out that this issue, this problem was not as big as I made it out to be. I, in my mind, made this something that I thought I was going to get killed over or, or, or go to jail over. When in fact, that was never going to be the case. It took somebody with experience who had been there before or somebody who was an expert in the space to understand exactly what the problem and the issues were. And that only happened when I decided to take care of this thing. So basically I was using a trademark, L-E-E-D, which was the exam, Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. My website was called inthelead.com, right? Inthelead.com. Samson says, I'm going to send a cease and desist if you keep talking about shaving your beard. All right, man. I got you. I, I hear you on that one. So essentially, I, we changed the domain name. Then I was worried again. I said, oh, no, this is going to create some problems. I had been spending all this time building website authority to rank in Google. Now, if I change the domain name, everything's going to get everything's going to change. And I started to fall into this new set of anxiety about my website. And Oh my gosh, like maybe I won't be sued, but now I'm not going to have a business anymore. I'm going to have to go back to work and everything's going to change because of this. My life is ruined. But then I found somebody who knew exactly what was going on and I started to have conversations with them about the idea of a domain name change. And little known to me, I eventually found out that you could do this thing called a 301 permanent redirect, which means you can write some code on your website so that when a person visits the new website, Google will understand that, oh, this was once the old website. So let's keep all the rankings. Let's keep everything that was there. It's just the domain name that's changing. It's a 301 permanent redirect. And wow, I was like, wow, this is, uh, this is, this is the answer. Great. So we did that. I changed the domain name from inthelead.com to greenexamacademy.com and everything worked out. And all we did was forward the domain to continue the story, because it's not over yet. Two weeks later, I get another beautiful letter from the United States Green Building Council's attorneys. And I thought it was gonna be a, hey, we're all good now, you know, we're sorry. And <laughs> of course it wasn't that. It was a, hey, you know what? You have seven days to stop using the domain name. And I'm like, what? We work this out. What is happening? Anxiety, negativity, bad day. Went back to my legal counsel because I knew that they would know what was going on. And they said, well, they're basically saying you're forward, you're still using the old domain name by forwarding to your new one. They want you to not use that at all, to not use that at all. And I'm like, okay. 
So if you go to indelead.com, here's what it's been saying for the last 12 years. The requested resource is no longer available on this server and there is no forwarding address. Please remove all references to this resource. Additionally, a 401 gone error was encountered while trying to use an error document to handle the request. This is what they wanted to see. And thankfully there was enough time for the 301 permanent redirect to kick in such that, well, if a person goes directly to indelead.com, it wasn't going to work. But um, the Green Exam Academy website did get hit a little bit, but I was able to keep most of the SEO and all the things that were happening there. So that was great. I'm very thankful about that. Yes, brains are good at predicting absurd worst case scenarios. Yes, Sarah. I think you're behind a little bit because you're watching the replay, but. So that that was fine and it worked out and greenexamacademy.com has continued to serve that audience. And now because I'm not in that industry anymore, I've taken my own products off the website and I've put other products in its place as an affiliate. And in fact, I started to make more money as an affiliate than I was selling my own products. It's not making anywhere near $25,000, $30,000 a month anymore, but it's about two to $3,000 on autopilot. I haven't touched it for eight years. Legit not touched it at all. And um, that just is a fun little cash cow, which is, uh, which is really cool. But I, I still remember the anxiety that I had. I was sitting in a parking lot at a Walmart next to my apartment, reading this document, literally like shaking. I could not drive. Like, physical shaking and um, just calling people asking for help. That was the other thing. Eventually, when I asked for help, guess what? I received it. And it would have been very easy for me to just sort of spiral out of control or completely give up or run away from the situation, which is oftentimes what we want to do. We, you know, I'm, I'm more of a when it comes to fight or flight, I'm usually a flight kind of person. So uh, I, I like to avoid those tough situations. And um, I know that doing that just delays the opportunity to solve that problem, right? It delays the opportunity to solve that problem. So that was one example of a lot of anxiety uh, coming my way. Another time, uh, and, and since we're just on the topic of lawyers, uh, remember my website, foodtrucker.com? I had a niche site built publicly called foodtrucker.com. And I hired a team to help continually write for that business. And they would do their research, they would uh, set up the WordPress post and publish it and, and, and come out with a weekly post for me for a nominal a nominal dollar amount, which was which was good. It was good. They were, they were able to sort of keep the website going, keep it at the top of the search engines for food truck related business type stuff. And I get another letter in the same kind of envelope I got from an attorney before and it was from a legal counsel that represented a photographer. And this photographer or this company who owned this image said that I had used an image on foodtrucker.com that was copyrighted and they were going to sue me for $16,000 for using one image. And this was four years ago. So I was already, you know, I had some business uh, things under my belt already. And even then, even though I had no, I knew what to do, anxiety. Not anxiety because I was I was worried about my life being over like it was before, but number one, getting really upset about the thing, getting really derailed because it was actually the team that I had hired that made this mistake. And I got so frustrated and so upset. I was heated. And of course, I didn't want to be sued. So... I went a day just get like writing an email to this team so upset and like threatening to sue them and all this stuff, which I couldn't do because in the contract, it, you know, anyway. I ended up writing, I think, four or five different messages and deleting them all. And that actually is something that I find happens quite often. Sometimes I just need to get things off my chest. And when they're off my chest, that anxiety oftentimes goes away. I never sent those messages. I basically told them, hey, please make sure because we just got this letter that when we use images, we do not take from Google search. And I had a long chat with the CEO of the company and you know they were very sorry about this. And 
they gave me some money back as a result. But it, 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 it wasn't going to fix the problem. But it was at least helping me calm my nerves related to how upset it was, because that was the thing that was derailing me. Right? So apparently, I, 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 I went to my attorney, and they eventually did some homework and found out that this company that sued me, in fact, was very notorious for finding images, just using Google image search, whatever, reverse search engineer or reverse engineer search, reverse image search, search I think it's called, and just finding people who use their, their images that they have in their catalog that they own the rights to and, and just suing the heck out of them. That's their business model. Can you imagine if that's your business? Like, how could you sleep at night? First of all, I understand people shouldn't be using your copyrighted work, but to build a business and to hawk on people who do that without any warning first and just literally suing them. And um, we ended up paying $1,000 or 2000 I can't remember the exact number, but uh, it didn't feel good, but it was, it was a big lesson for me in terms of making sure that any company that I work with, please make sure that we don't do these certain things that could definitely get me in trouble, if that makes sense, right? GTO says, yes, I've written so many emails to exes and never sent them. Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank you, GTO. Uh, but yeah, that was another moment where I thought things were spiraling out of control. I was very upset at another person or another another uh, group, and that wasn't helping. Trying to go, okay, here's the situation. Here's what we need to do. Went back to my attorney, understood that, okay, well, he was able to negotiate it down. And that's what they do, right? That's what they do. JT says, sometimes getting things off our chest only makes situations worse. I think it depends on how we get things off our chest. I think if you internalize them and get them off your chest that way, or you find somebody to speak to who's willing to listen and just be open to that conversation, that is where I think getting things off your chest makes the most sense. In other times, I would imagine, especially when it comes to arguments with certain loved ones or other, other, other colleagues or things like that, just saying things that are on top of your mind may not be the, the the best solution, right? Because like you said, JT, considering that, well, I might need some time in order to process this and have a cool down period can, can, can be helpful too. I think getting things off your chest means the idea of just outwardly processing, if that makes sense, but don't outwardly process to those who may be affected by that outward processness. Anyway. Doesn't it seem that some plaintiff attorneys are counting on defendants feeling anxious? Yeah, absolutely, Doug, 100%. I mean, I guarantee that this company that goes out and, and finds these images that are being used starts with a really high number to provide anxiety and then kind of comes down to a dollar amount that, well, at least it's not that amount, but still they get paid and it's unfortunate, but that's, that's what they do. There are a few unethical businesses out there, both online and brick and mortar, sadly. Yeah, I would say so. Cool. So let's talk about another situation. So <laughs> there was that time that I had a troll who, and we've talked about this story many times, I'm not going to go super deep into it. But this person had said some really nasty things about me, not just on my website, but on every other website out there that at the time I was featured on either as a podcast guest or just written about. And I woke up one morning to dozens of messages from friends and colleagues who said, hey, Pat, this guy's saying really nasty things about you on my website. And I just shelled up. This was something that completely derailed me more than anything that I have ever experienced before. I stopped working for an entire month. I didn't publish any new content. I didn't create any new videos. I didn't write a single word. All I could do was consider and think about what this person was saying. And the more I started to dwell on this, the more I started to believe that what this person was saying was true. Am I a con man? Am I a scammer? And I knew internally that I wasn't, but then I started to think, well, why would this person say this? And I started to make up reasons that would make what he was saying maybe true. And it just shows you the power of what one negative comment can do to you if you, in fact, dwell on those negative comments. And I've come to learn since that hurt people hurt people. Eventually, my friends, my colleagues brought me back to life. They said, every second you waste on this hater is a second you're taking away from those who need you, who want you to be there, who adore you. 
And it was at that moment that I started to make that mental shift. And it took talk, it took other people to step up. Thank God that I had built these relationships because I was definitely in a time of need. And it was people who noticed that I had disappeared who came back to rescue me. And if I didn't had if I didn't have those relationships, who knows? I I'm, I might not be here today just because of what one person said, right? So this um, imposter syndrome, as Ida says, uh, starts to take place, and sometimes we look for those moments and that that maybe prove that right. And of course, a lot of these people who are more outspoken, they're really good with their words. They're good at arguing. They're good at making their case. And sometimes, if we are not good at um, paying attention to what is true, and we definitely take in their, their their thoughts, we can begin to sometimes believe that. And I'm so thankful that I have the, these friends and relationships, which which is why it's really important. And I, I learned this from Jordan Harbinger. We are going to face challenges. We, we know this. Uh, small, big, there's going to be challenges. And it can be very scary knowing that that's going to be the case because who knows what challenges life is going to throw at us. But the one thing that can help you more than anything are these relationships that you build now. And I learned this from Jordan Harbinger because he himself went through a major challenge in his life and business. His company at Art of Charm, which is he was the host of that podcast, which was one of the most popular podcasts, uh, they kicked him out of the business. They voted him out and they took his name. Uh, they they took all of his work and, and just claimed ownership of it and are still going. And he was very upset. He lost his job. He had nowhere to go. And I remember receiving a text message from Jordan telling me about the situation and I did whatever I could to help him. And so did everybody else that he had kept in touch with and had built a relationship with over time. And what happened was he had built over time this idea of connecting with as many people as possible and connecting with them for no other reason than to just be there as a friend and serve them if they needed help. And this is what Jordan calls your layoff lifeline. Whatever version of your layoff is, whether it's getting actually laid off like Jordan or myself back in 08, or laid off in the sense that, you know, you are now in a dark place where you need to have some help or, or, or speak to others. And the truth is, if it weren't for the relationships that he had built, he would not have been able to get back on his feet and start the Jordan Harbinger show and kick it off so quickly with the help and the connections that his friends had offered him to bring new guests on the show, his show, the Jordan Harbinger show, is now outperforming his old show. And it's because he had these layoff lifelines. The idea of layoff lifeline is this. Reaching out to, befriending, and talking to, and, and, and trying to serve as many other people as possible with no agenda for yourself other than to help and build that relationship. It's reaching out to somebody who you made a connection with and just checking up on them to see how they're doing. Because if you need something, and when you need something, that's when you first start reaching out to people, it's not gonna it's not gonna work out very well. Yes, there might be some very generous people out there who will help, even if you hadn't built that relationship, but chances are that's gonna be few and far between. And it's those who you've built a relationship with that you could feel comfortable asking for help because you've helped them before. That's when it can when it can begin to make sense for you. So this layoff lifeline the idea is and the analogy is you're digging your well now before you're thirsty you're developing these relationships again it would be weird to go hey friend i know we haven't talked for five years but you know i have this ebook about uh you know breeding labrador do puppies like I, I i was hoping you might be able to share it for me or hey i'm going through some tough times now i know we haven't talked in 10 years but but can we chat what a what a what a what a crazy position to put somebody in versus reaching out to somebody who you've helped with, who you've had this steady relationship with. It doesn't mean you have to text the person every day, but it just means that, you know, if, if, if you need some help, you can know that they're going to be there to listen. And one thing that I love to offer to people, and I've done this before on stage, in fact, is to have you do this exercise once a week. You go into your text message app, you scroll all the way to the bottom, and then you just message those who you haven't messaged in a while. And what happens is you're able to reconnect with those people. And again, you connect with them with for no other reason than to just reconnect with them. You're not asking them for anything other than how they're doing. And what happens is you start to keep these lifelines going. And 
when you might need something, when these challenges arise, you now have more people that you could go to when that when that uh, moment happens. And of course, you could also be there for them too. Whew. Just looking at the chat. Osmos here, no worries. Glad you glad you made it. Lex, did you get that Slack invite from somebody? You all know I said the secret word earlier, right? I did say it, I promise. Hola, Matty, great to see you here. And and then the final thing I'll say is is sometimes we have uh, big challenges major challenges where we consider getting out of them impossible. And that may or may not be true. I think that if we do consider things impossible, we immediately sort of cut away any possibility. And as Henry Ford says, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. However, I want you to consider, well, if it is impossible, well, what now is possible? And that's where I want you to, especially during these challenging times, Always consider the fact that although things are tough, there are new things that might be able to become available. There are new possibilities. Uh, what is possible now? And then, like I said, find and connect with those people who might be able to help you understand what it's like to go through that certain situation too. Find other people who would be willing to help. There's so many people out there that are willing to help. We talked about, there was a whole episode of the income stream the other day that was all about this idea of how to ask for help. And the fact that there are so many people out there who are in fact willing to help and want to help and feel good helping. And you would be taking that away from them if you just kind of kept that to yourself. So easy to get down on yourself. Surrounding yourself with the right people is so important. Indeed, that, that, that to me, e even if you are introverted and you're not really a people person you don't have to surround yourself with a group of people find that one person if you're an introvert or you're maybe a six on the enneagram you know you you know that you're more likely to have deeper connections with fewer people so you don't have to go and reach out and befriend hundreds of people but go to the two or three friends that you know that you can trust that have helped you before who you've helped in the past and don't be afraid to reach out it is not a weakness to reach out for help it is not a weakness it's actually a strength to know that you indeed understand what you're going through mentally, and you can make the decision to go out and reach for help, even though it may be embarrassing, even though it might be uh, not what you want to do. It's what you know you need to do to get out of this funk. Whew, I thought that was kind of cool how we had a incredible mistake happen on the income stream earlier this morning, and it actually fit in perfect with this particular chat. And it was just that was a small moment. And to tie this back around, sometimes these small things that can go wrong can stack on each other if we let them. That's the big thing. If we let them, it's all up here. So don't let the fact that the eggs had gone bad and then the toilet overflowed and the fact that maybe you forgot something on your schedule affect the rest of your day because these are things that are in fact separate from each other. But it's our mind that connects them all together. And we could choose to connect them all together negatively or to, to include a timeline that, yeah, it just so happened that I had some not so great things happen at the beginning of the day, but your mind and the positivity that you have moving forward and the connections that you might have with other people allow you to get out of that funk and go into and end the day on a high note. You can always end the day on a high note. What is this Enneagram? I keep hearing about it. Everybody's talking about it. Yeah, Enneagram is a... It's similar to Strength Finders. It's similar to Myers Briggs and and the idea that you know there's sort of cl classifications and and groups of people who uh, behave and act and think and 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 um, kind of go about their day in a certain way. And I'm not going to go too deep into it here, but depending on what number you are, there's this classification. You respond to certain things. There's a good version of you. There's a not so great version of you. And by knowing a little bit more about yourself and how you react to certain situations, how you best like to receive information, how you best like to interact with other numbers, you're more able to navigate 
relationships and yourself much easier. It was actually very, very useful for my wife, April and I, to learn about ourselves and each other more in this sort of paradigm, the, the Enneagram. There's in fact a really good Instagram called Enneagram and Coffee, which is a really fun Instagram that April and I often check out and we follow that really displays the certain characteristics of each of these numbers. And you know, I know we don't like to put ourselves into categories. However, I have found that it is, is really, really valuable. We do the Enneagram test with our team and that way we know who is more of a challenger, who is somebody who more like a nine, for a nine, for example, somebody who will accept anything that comes their way based on what other people say, even if it's something they don't want to do, they'll most likely accept it. So they're less likely, a nine is less likely to speak up. And so if there is a nine on our team, we know to ask this person what they really want, because sometimes they'll just go with the crowd. And that's not like they're, they're not no number is better than another. It's just how uh, certain numbers behave or what a certain number responds to. For me as a three, a three is somebody who is, um, you know, the performer, they are somebody who will feel and get energy when other people tell them that they are doing great things when they 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 a three feels value when they know they're offering value to others. Uh, this is a good thing because this is somebody who will step up when it comes to building communities and things like that. But there's also a not so great side. An, a three could potentially over promise. They want to say things that other people will respond to, but sometimes may not follow through. And that's the negative side of a three. A one is somebody who follows the books to a T. Every instruction is followed. They are the ones who read the instruction manual when you get a new product. Um, and that's a good thing. You can rely on them. Matt on my team, my uh, oper my my operations, my chief uh, operating officer, he is a one. And a one works so well in that position because they're going to follow the process the way it's supposed to. And they're gonna be able to project manage in a way that'll make sense because it's a step-by-step -step process, which is really cool. Versus the negative side of a one is, hey, if, if things go not according to plan, it could completely derail them for the rest of the day. So when you learn more about these people and these numbers, you begin to understand how now, not like, oh, I know things about you that you don't know. It's just like, that's how that person is. And now I can better serve them as a result, if that makes sense. Cool. I thought personality isn't permanent. You're right, there is an episode, and that's why I love that episode, because it was a very different thought. And yes, you can potentially migrate from one personality to another, another or learn over time. I definitely have since high school. I'm completely different than I was. But I think that, um, tell them I, I'll see you in court, buddy. <laughs> wow, I can't believe this hour went by so quickly. Again, the beginning, kind of crazy, but we made it work and we came out the other end really well. And don't let the negative things that happen in your day affect the rest of your day because they are separate. It's only you that can connect them and you can choose to whether or not to have that still, that 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 negative negativity live, without, uh, live with you throughout the rest of the day or to stop it right now and then move forward and everything else is separate. So, whew. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for today. I appreciate you. Tomorrow... We are going to start at, again, I promise, we're gonna to try to get it at a regular time every day again, but just with the school and the, the landscapers and all this stuff, and they, again, they came early today, which is what threw everything off. Tomorrow, we're gonna to start at eight. Uh, we're gonna start at 8 a.m. Pacific tomorrow and also on Saturday as well. So 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern. So yeah, thank you so much. Team Flynn, you're amazing. You're amazing. Uh, thank you for the support and for being here. I'm about to hit publish on a video right now. In fact, I will do this right now. So this is the video that kind of caused all these problems earlier today. But I'm going to put this into some uh, playlists right now. Latest video uploads. We're going to put this into entrepreneurship. We're going to put this into where else do we want to put this traffic and conversion strategies. We're going to put this into um, pick a platform to grow. 
and money making ideas and building your audience big. Done. And now I'm going to go unlisted and now it is public. Boom. So now this video is public. And so if you'd like to check it out, even if it's just to go there and leave a, a quick thumbs up, that'd be super helpful. Uh, not required though. And again, I appreciate all of you today. Grandma Goody, thank you for the starburst and the amazing and very kind gift and the felt Pat Flynn with the removable, uh, removable beard. And uh, just can't thank you enough. Thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow, 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern. patflynn.com slash the income stream will take you there. And uh, we'll see you all tomorrow. Peace out, y'all. This is the income stream to help you achieve your dream. All while we keep it clean, this is the income stream. It's the kind of show where you can come and go, but then you leave inspired with no fee required. The income stream with Pat Flynn. Remember, tomorrow, we're bringing the wheel out. We're going to play some games. We're going to do some giveaways. We're going to have some fun. And so I hope you can join 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern. How is it Thursday already? Anyway, crush your goals. I'll see you soon. Appreciate you. Team Flynn for the win. Bruh. Oh, and my family and I, we will be streaming later on Twitch. Uh, later in the afternoon, we're going to go on a bike ride after school and then stream. It'll probably be around 3.30 or 4 p.m. Pacific on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash hot coals only. Peace out, y'all. Much love.